Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. In this week's episode, we're traveling back to Orlando Lakefront Tiny House Community to meet up with Daniel and Aliandra to take a tour of their gorgeous self-built tiny home. This tiny house was built with two eight-foot skylights, reclaimed materials, and it prioritizes a simple layout with all of the creature comforts of a regular sized home. And if you'd like to see a tour of this tiny house community, make sure that you check out the link in the description. But before we get started, if you like videos like this, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new unique home tour. Everybody, I'm Daniel. Hola a todos. Mi nombre es Alejandra. This is our tiny home on wheels. We've been living in our home for almost uh, one year. We had a, about a 1,500 square foot house in Michigan, Holland, Michigan. One of the reasons why we were motivated to move out of that space into a tiny home was so that we could move closer down south, more toward like warmer weather. And because it's near to my family in Colombia. Initially, the idea was mine. One day I decided, you know what, I'm gonna pull the trigger, I'm gonna start on our journey and started building a tiny house. It took us about two years. I built it on a very part-time basis, just on the weekends or whenever I had time. I like the idea. That was crazy, but I like it. Going from a traditional size home to a tiny home is quite an adjustment, but for us, it's been quite a joy. A space is limited, so you have to be very creative with how you use that space. Also, if you want to create a good environment, you need to be very intentional with all the things. It's a tiny home that has a lot of the creature comforts of a larger home. Welcome to our home. We call it the skylight. Why? Because it has two skylights that are about eight foot wide. One in the front, one in the back. We chose to build this house on a trailer that is about eight and a half feet wide by 25 feet long. The actual height of the house is about 13 and a half feet. Right now we want to talk about the siding and why we went with these options. Number one, I wanted it to look aesthetically pleasing. I wanted it to be something that we were proud of, that we like to look at. Secondly, I think it was uh, also important for us to keep the weight down, so I, I made a lot of decisions based on that. In the building process, one of the other things I wanted to do is keep the cost down. So one of the examples of that is actually this corrugated metal all new stuff. We went to the box store and, you know, picked up as light material as I could pick up. If you look toward the middle here, this looks like a wooden siding because it's got that texture to it and uh, it looks like it's been painted or something like that, but it's actually aluminum, so it's super light. Uh, the cool thing about that was that was a big score for me at uh, Habitat for Humanity. If you'll look here, this is basically a trailer that's been repainted. What I did is I took an old trailer, my dad's old camper trailer from like 1981, and we tore off all of the trailer material that was on top of the actual metal frame. I sanded that thing down, brought it down to the bones, and just repainted it, kept it as uh, nice as I could. If I could do it all over again, it was way too much work. I think I would start off with a fresh, brand new trailer. I think it's also a cool thing because it's a sentimental value for me to have you know, the bones or the trailer bed be something that my father used to use and, and have as his own. All right, so now we're here at the tongue of the trailer. One of the things I wanted to do is take advantage of the tongue of the trailer. A lot of people leave this open and just empty, basically you just have like a big V here. Uh, I took the usable parts of it and built this little, it's like a closet essentially that you can only access from the inside. Uh, it's great, I have my tools in there, good stuff. Here, you'll see a propane tank. It's the original propane tank system that the 81 year trailer had on it. We don't have a lot of need for propane uh, because we just use it for uh, heating our water and also for the um, 
the cooking top that we have on the inside. It's a two burner cooking top. So let's head on inside. Welcome to our home, as we affectionately call Skylight. We have skylights over on the back and toward the front as well. The skylights I found on Facebook Marketplace. When I was building the house, I was sort of making it up as I went along. Basically designed the house around the two skylights. To me, what they do is they give you an illusion of space. It feels twice as big as, as what it is. Es muy bonito despertar y ver el cielo, ver las nubes. The house on the inside is all shades of white, kind of gray, some little beige colors. And we were intentional to do that because we wanted to keep the illusion of space. We're able to feel like that creates a little bit more space on the inside, doesn't close us in with darker colors. In order to accomplish our goal to keep it as open as possible, we kept as many things off the walls as possible. So no big cabinets, you know, on the midsection of the tiny house. Every cabinet's kind of for storage down on the bottom here and also on this side here. So as far as the kitchen goes, we have an open floating shelf layout. We have all of our items on this end that are like our bowls and our plates and some of our coffee items. And then on this end, we have kind of a mason jar storage system that we created. You know, we just really wanted to make sure that we combined the value of aesthetics, making sure that things are aesthetically pleasing, but also functional. We love to cook. My wife's a great cook. Uh, a lot of good food comes from Colombia. My family's Mexican. I love to cook tacos and, and just, you know, amazing uh, Mexican cuisine. So yeah, we have all of our spices here. It's beautiful. I would think the size of the fridge, I would say it's the right size. My wife would probably say it, it's too small. But uh, for now, it's good uh, for the two of us. You really just have to be very intentional with, you know, making sure you go through it every week and throw out the stuff that you don't need. We're in the bathroom. It's the space underneath the loft of the bedroom upstairs. It's a bathroom, obviously. You got your toilet, you got your shower, a sink here. But also you kind of have your like walk-in closet on this side. This is where we store all of our clothes. The shower, I think it's a 32 inch by 32 inch shower panel. I basically custom built it based on that shower pan. It's uh, tall enough for me. I'm about 5'10". So once you get in, I'm right at the top there, but you want to make sure that you use this shower unit pretty much just as it falls on your shoulders and it's pretty good shower. I really like this space. We have enough room to, you know, getting ready in the morning. And the colors that we choose also are neutral colors. So the environment and the atmosphere here, it's really nice. It's almost like I have my own walk-in closet. You can be as savvy as you want with uh, the way that you build your house. One of the ways that I got around building my own stair uh, case uh, unit was by going on Facebook Marketplace and I found this off of an old pontoon boat and uh, I was able to pick it up for pretty cheap. They're aluminum so they're really light. Gives us the option to be able to, you know, hold on as we walk up. Here we go. Follow me. As you can tell, there's a skylight and a bed. We have two side tables there to kind of hold our things at night. Beautiful part about it at night is if we want, we can keep the blinds open, sleep under the stars, under the shade uh, during the day of the tree. Uh, at night, you know, we get to, to see planes fly, helicopters flying by. It's a pretty entertaining experience. There's also a few owls up in this tree. Every once in a while, we'll hear them uh, hooting and uh, making noise up there. So it's quite an experience. Every day is different, and, and we like that about this place. The, one of the ways that we stay cool with these skylights, uh, it's basically, it's a double pane skylight. So it has one layer here and it's got another layer on the outside. That helps a little bit with the heat transfer, but also we do have the shade of this beautiful tree. It is kind of concaved on the inside. You can't really tell from the initial view of it, but this is about as high as it goes right here in this spot. You can sit up, we watch movies here at night this thing will actually spin out or kind of hinge out and you can turn it 
It's your own private little screen. Most uh, comfortable position in this space, obviously though, because it is limited, is uh, laying down, get a couple pillows behind you, watch a movie, it's fun. So what we found after moving into a tiny home is that you would actually be surprised how little you need to be comfortable. And it's really great. It's very kind of a liberating experience to have the things that you want and to want the things that you have. Thanks for watching this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you'd like to see a tour of this tiny house community, make sure you check out the link that we have in the description and I will see you soon with another unique home tour.